welcome today we want to go and study SPSS so first I'll start from how you open it so in opening SPSS you go to start that is uh, open in the start menu then you go to all programs then in the all programs you will search for your where you where your SPSS is that's one way another one method two you can double click if you have it in the desktop you can just double click it uh, double click now in this case I'm having SPSS version 20 is the one I'm using to uh, to teach now once you have opened your SPSS it has windows it is certain types of windows one we have a window that immediately comes out uh, once you open the SPSS it is called a startup dialog box uh, this dialog box is used in selecting uh, what an SPSS user or you may be interested in doing for instance we have you can uh, run a tutorial that's you can either run a tutorial you can type in data you can run an existing query or you can create a new query using a, a database wizard so this is we, we call it a startup dialog since our main interest is to type in data in a species we are going to select type in data and then we click or alternatively we can use the close uh, dialog box to display a species the species data editor window at the background this by clicking the the word cancel we can click here cancel and then we already have the background that is or if i click here cancel i'm going to have already the data editor so those are some of the ways to do in the startup now in this data editor or where we are having our space windows and the files we have three kinds of windows and in each we have the opportunity to save the contents of each first the data window editor is the first window which you encounter when you open uh, the program this one is the first window you encounter and it is used to define and enter your data and to perform statistical procedures a species data editor files have a suffix dot saf i'm going to show you later the results of the statistical tests appear in the output window I'm going to show you so for now I want us to be on the data editor window now in this data editor window where ju I just want to avoid a lot of uh, a lot of theory and we go to practical how do we enter data the first step in working with SPSS is to enter your data and to create an SPSS data file although i'm going to assume that in this lesson you are going to type your data for the first time then you should be aware that the spss can also read already established data files from other programs such as excel or lutus one two three so when you first open an spss for windows you will be prompted to make a decision about running the tutorial typing in new data opening an existing data because you'll be entering a new data we type in a new data and then we click ok now this is now our window the initial data window screen you see it is empty now when you type in your data you have to read that the data from each case or participant must be typed on a separate line for example if you are interested in analyzing the five test scores 
of 20 students in a class, you will use one line with the five grade scores on each line. For each of the 20 students, and that is what we call SPSS. Now in this case, I want to talk about the variables before we enter there. Now we have a list of variables. Now in this case, here we have another one. We have in the data editor, we have a variable view and a data view. Now in this case, in the data view, we are going to I'm going to show you how you you maneuver uh, those those files and what happens when you enter data and how you do various aggregates of this SPSS. Now, because of time, I don't want to dwell more on on the on the theory, but there are some things which are very crucial that I must mention before we go ahead. Here we have uh, I'm going to talk about the variables. The variable has uh, it is a variable attributes. So here we have what we call the type. This allows you to define the type of data. For example, we have various types of data. We have, it can have numeric, a comma, a dot, scientific notation, that is exponential, for instance, data. We have a date where we can have date in terms of various formats. We have the dollar, custom currency, string, these are like characters. And then we have a restricted uh, numeric integers, that's integer with uh, uh, leading zeros. Now, then we have the width. The width, this defines the total number of characters. For instance, 8. You can be having 10 or less than 8. So these are the total number of characters allowed. And then we have the decimals. In the decimals, is the number of characters beyond the decimal point. For example, 2.00, 2.000. So these are the number of characters beyond the decimal point. Then we have the label. The label allows you to list a more extensive label for your variable. Eight character variable names are difficult to remember. For example, in the name, we are only allowed to use eight characters. And now using eight characters alone, it's, not, it's difficult to remember. So here we are allowed to use an extensive And then, and we recommend that you always access the option of listing more ex a, a more descriptive label. It will allow you to remember. Then here we have the, the, the value. This allows you to provide labels for various levels of your variable. When I'm going to be practical, you'll understand what I mean. Then you have a missing. It enables you to designate a certain score as non-missing. Then you have the column, which allows you to change the maximum number of characters in a column. Then we have the align, allows you to determine the alignment of your column to the right, left, or center. Then you have the measure, which allows you to determine the kind of scale which you're going to use. You have three kind of scales. You have the scale, uh, the ordinal, and the nominal i'm going to explain more then we have the the role is the input whereby we have the input target both non partition and the split in the practical i'm going to explain then coming to the variable name the variable name uh this is the name given to a variable for identification reasons such a name is supposed to be very summarized to an extent of not exceeding eight characters. In a summary, 
this, there are some rules which we must use when coming with the name. First, the first character must be alpha be alphabetic. The remaining characters can be alphabetic or numerical symbols. So the first, for instance, here, here they are using the default V A R uh, R. Uh. So V, the first one must be alphabetic. The other remaining can be either numeric or symbols. Then another rule, the no spaces can appear in the name. So when you are writing the name, no spacing. The variables must not end with a period. The variables should not exceed eight characters. And there are